Hi everyone. Now we're going to talk about how to make testable questions with our data. Again, I'm Kristen Hunter-Thompson. I'm one of the members on the team for the data project this semester. So let's dive in. So before we start, I just want us to take a second to um, pause the video after I provide these questions and just think to yourself, sort of, where do we use data in the process of science or doing science? And where do we ask questions from or with data in the process of science? So pause the video, jot down a few notes, spend a few seconds thinking about that. And then when you're ready, start the video up again. If you haven't seen this resource, How Science Works, from the University of California at Berkeley, the Museum of Paleontology, I highly recommend checking it out. It's a great way of uh, visualizing the process of science in a different way than the traditional linear scientific method. And what I really like about it is that data shows up in almost every bucket and the biggest bucket in the middle is all about data. So, we use data to determine the benefits and outcomes, and it's what we actually use to communicate for feedback within the community. And it's part of that exploration, which we'll talk about in the, the next mini lecture, exploratory data analysis. But data serves this really big function in the middle when we do the process of science. But that begs the question, so how do we form our questions to kick off this sort of spaghetti plate of the process of science rather than the pre-cooked spaghetti noodles of the linear scientific method. So we're gonna think about how can we design questions that we can answer with data rather than that we can look up on Google or that we can look up in a book because that's really what we're after when we're asking questions and when we're doing science. So it's helpful to take a step back and think about sort of the two different kinds of questions that we ask in science. So there one kind of question are the questions that we ask for do it when we're doing a science project or when we have a question about a concept. And these questions are most often answered by doing reading about the topic that we're interested in. They start the, the actual question frame starts with why or is type question words. They're often centered around facts to answer the question. And the information is gathered from different kinds of sources. Those facts are collected from different kinds of sources that help us answer the question for our science project or a question about a science concept. Whereas when we're actively doing science, a testable question is it's we measure, in, we measure data to answer it, and then we've ans we answer that question with the data that we have measured or collected. The actual sentence frame often starts with words like how, what, when, who, which, those question words that sort of invite more specificity as to what we're interested in, as well as are more sort of focused in what the components are that we're actually looking at because we answer these questions based around the variables or the attributes that we have in our data that we can look at that relate to the question. So the information that we use are one, two, three, four variables, and we're looking at how do they change or vary or not change or not vary in relation to each other, in relation to themselves. Those are the kinds of pieces of information that we use from data in a testable question. So it can be helpful to think of some strategies for how to make sure we have a testable question that we're using in science. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using the SMART acronym. So I wanted to just take a few moments to remind us all of what the SMART, what a SMART question would be. So first off, it is specific. So it's not too broad. So we're just talking about this. Questions that begin with how, what, when, who, or which, not the why and the ins, help but center us more quickly into a testable question. They're measurable, so there are data sets available or collectible to answer the question. And the questions that we have can actually be answered um, by, by using the data. We, ha we have to collect or find those data to answer the question. We can't just read about what somebody else has discovered to answer the question. The questions are a chain of can actually be investigated with data. So the data are available to 
data over which you want to be answering this question. Things like that fall into the achievable realm. The questions are relevant in terms of so there's, there's a reason that we care or why somebody you should care or why you care about the question that you're asking. And when it comes to asking when doing science in our science classrooms, really this often boils down to our questions include which variable or relationship we're interested in looking at. Like that's why we care. We're interested in the variable, which or can call it an attribute or a specific relationship or a change or a phenomenon that we're interested in, but a, a component, a specific question be helpful to, to distill them down to what are the one or two or, that we are interested in teasing apart the fewer variables within our question or more focus the easier it will be to test it the data are temporally or spatially oriented so there's a time asking our question or there's a asking our question and by by putting those that helps us focus our attention and be more informative with what our question really need to answer the question so just as a reminder we want our a, a quick way to try to ref to work towards refining our questions to be more testable rather than science project science concept questions is that they're specific they're measurable it's achievable within the time frame and resources that you have it is relevant to you and to others and that there's a temporal or spatial orientation to the question when relevant or when applicable so how can we refine our questions to be more testable questions that we're asking from data? And so I just wanna provide some examples of what it could look like to refine a question. So an, an original question might be, are krill and baby penguins related? This is a question that um, a student posed for me previously. And the, the challenge with this question is that it's really broad and really open-ended. And so what are some, quick ways that we could refine this down. Well, number one, we could make it more specific to where the spatial component, the spatial boundary. So that could look like, what is the relationship between krill biomass and penguin chick populations around Palmer Research Station, which is down in Antarctica? Or does the relationship between krill biomass and penguin chick population vary along the Western Antarctic Peninsula? So in both of these questions, we focused more on where is it specifically on the world that we are looking at this pattern. Another way that you could go about it is that you could make it more specific in terms of when you're interested in looking at this. So for example, it could be, what is the relationship between krill biomass and penguin chick populations across a season or over a year or over a decade, whichever temporal scale you're interested in. Or the question, or a question could be, does the relationship between krill biomass and penguin chick populations vary over a decade? So we've narrowed it into what, what amount of time are we talking about when we're asking about this relationship? Or another way that we could refine it is you could make it more specific by what other variables or what are the variables that you're looking at. So a question could be, what is the relationship between krill biomass and penguin chick populations as it changes with open temp temperature? So here, right, we've clearly articulated our three variables and which we think is the, we've indicated which are the dependent and independent variables. Or does the relationship between krill biomass and penguin, penguin chick populations vary with sea ice extent? So by adding that extra variable in, we actually narrowed down what it is we're really intending to look at within our question. I should say with all three of these examples, we've also provided more specificity as to the actual variable of krill and penguins that we're interested in looking at. So krill biomass and penguin chick population counts. And so that just comes back to like the more specific we can be, the more it actually becomes something that we could look at the data and based on those data, come up with an 
attempt to come up with a question and answer for our question. These are three of many ways that you could take this question of are krill and baby penguins related and make it into a testable question. So what does this actually look like when we have data, right? It's good to think about broad type questions of how we would refine that. So let's look at an example of how refining our question makes it easier to figure out what data we should use to answer our testable question. So a question could be, why was it warm in Antarctica? This isn't a testable question, right? It doesn't meet any of the metrics that we've talked about earlier in this mini lecture. Um, but we could refine the question to be, how did the air temperature vary around Palmer Research Station Antarctica in 2015? So in this revision, we've become more specific on, we're specifically interested in air temperature, we're interested in how it varies, we're, in, we're interested in the air temperature around Palmer Research Station Antarctica, so one specific place in Antarctica, and we're also interested in why it, how it changed in 2015, so in a specific place in time. So now that we have this testable question, we can look at our data to make sure we actually have data to answer this question. And here's a snapshot of some data that, that you could pull up. And here we have, to, we have temperature of the temperature highs, the lows, and the averages at this station, a near Palmer station, research station in Antarctica. And while this screenshot shows you from 1992, these data are actually from 1992 to 2017. So it would include that time band of 2015. So we now know that we have the data. So then it's really easy, right? Because we know what columns, we know what variables we're looking at. So we know what columns to pull the data from. So then we can make a graph and apologies, this came through very fuzzy. Um, so we can, plot our temperature here along the x-axis or the y-axis excuse me and we have time the months along the x-axis because we're interested in across all of 2015 so we're interested in sort of month to month how things are varying and then we can plot our highs our average and our lows and now we can use this graphic this visual of the data to start exploring and playing and coming up with an answer to our question so by focusing our question, it helps us find the data. And by having the data, it helps us look to answer our question, which is why there's this importance of refining our questions to be testable, to actually set ourselves up for more success when we are working with data. So I encourage you to pause the, pause the recording and write down some thoughts that you have to these different reflection questions. So the questions are what strategies or approaches or processes can you use to develop your testable question for the next time that you work with data? And then are there any additional supports that might help you to ask testable questions rather than science project or science concept type questions? So pause the video, grab a piece of paper, write down some responses to these questions, and then when you're done, come back and restart the video. So thanks for joining us tonight. Again, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about how to refine your questions to make them more testable with data. Please feel free to reach out to me via my email or leave me a message on my voicemail, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Have fun making testable questions. Thanks. Bye.